If I had to place a bet on which rules are gonna come up on the hard module for your SAT, this is gonna be one of them. They are basically testing uh, a positives here. The idea that we have some sort of extra descriptive clause and we need to think about the punctuation around that clause. So uh, we do have other clauses here. This is a long, long sentence, right? Yeah, and, and the answer choices would tell me to think about punctuation, right? I have a, a very strong colon here. That's gonna affect things. The dash is kind of weird. We see some other dashes. So let's take a look and kind of break this thing down. Long attributed to Jacques-Louis David, the preeminent neoclassical painter of his day. So that's just a long intro clause. Let's ditch it. The 1801 painting Marie Josephine Charlotte do whatever gained fresh attention in the 1990s when art historians discovered that the painting, which depicts a solitary young woman sketching, so extra, let's ditch it, was actually the work of little known French portrait artist Marie Denise Villers. Okay. So you can kind of see based on what I've crossed out. We've, we've shortened the sentence quite a bit, uh, but it has nothing to do with the sentence structure now that I look at it. Like I knew this beforehand, but that I would have discovered this now is that we don't want a dash because we've already got the two dashes. That would be very, very confusing. And um, we're, we're continuing our thought here. So both the dash and the colon would be very final. We could do a colon because we do have a sentence there, but like, we're, we don't want to separate her name from her title. And the comma wouldn't want to do that either. But many of you are going to pick that choice, I think, because you're like, okay, we have her kind of like description and then we have her name. And so we want to put the name usually in two commas between within the middle of a sentence. But because it's at the end, we would just use the one. But no, the SAT is very strict about this rule. This is a, a, a case where the title comes first. So the way that I talk about this in my lesson, which you should watch on a positives, a positives, just search my channel for that word, uh, basically is that when we have the, uh, the definition, ooh, wow, that was weird, uh, the definition first, um, then the term, we don't use any commas at all. But if the term comes first, then the definition, we would put two commas before we go back to the sentence. So what do I mean by definition and term? Well, the term is kind of like if you were to look this person up on Wikipedia or in a dictionary, what would be the thing you'd look up? Well, you'd look up her name, right? So that's our definition, right? Or sorry, that's our term. Oh my gosh. We'd look up the term and then our definition is like what we would learn about this person. Well, what is she? She is a little known French portrait artist, right? So that's our definition, right? Notice that it's a little longer. Notice that it's it could apply to other people. There are probably other little-known French portrait, portrait artists. So it, it's not as specific. So the more specific thing, that is what we would call the term. That's the thing you would look up. So it's almost always going to be a name, a specific name. So because the definition comes first, we're... In most cases on the SAT, not going to use any commas. The only exception is if that definition gets really, really, really long, or maybe if it has like a word like uh, the or a uh in front of it, then we might have to do two commas to separate the term out. But that's rare, and usually there's something else going on in the sentence that will force you to kind of recognize that. So I wouldn't want you to worry about that, but again, watch my lesson on a positives, and I will really break this down with some good examples. This is a rule, like I said at the beginning, is almost certain to come up. If I had to place a money on what rules are gonna come up on every SAT, this is one of them, because they know that you've memorized this rule wrong. They know that you have a fake rule in your brain that you are going to try to apply. And I see my students struggle with this all the time. And even when I tell them what the real rule is, they can't break their habit. So you really have to be aware of what's going on when you see this question, because if you are just going out kind of like robotically through your grammar and through your instincts, you're gonna make a mistake. You're gonna get it wrong because you've gotten it wrong uh, all the time in your own writing. So we have to really readjust for the SAT.